What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use one of my favorite plugins for DaVinci Resolve. You can also use it for Premiere Pro and After Effects, but the plugin is Dehancer Pro. Uh, the company did reach out to me to do a review on it, but I promised to be as non-biased as possible and give you all my honest opinion on it. So if you want to see how to take your videos from this to this to this, just stay tuned and let's get started. Okay, so first you're going to go to the Dehancer Film Emulation website and they have a couple of different versions that you can download. They have the Pro, the Lite, and then just the Film Grain and obviously the prices vary. Then they have a couple of more different options down here. I'm going to be doing the Pro and this includes everything. And you can download it for Resolve, Final Cut Pro, or uh, even Premiere Pro and After Effects. I'm going to be downloading it for DaVinci Resolve. So I'll hit download. I'm going to be using it on Windows. And they have a couple of different prices. For the lifetime is $449. One year is $299. Six months, $199. And three months, $149. So then you would just hit download. I already have it download, so I'm just going to open it up. And I believe it's going to be this one here. So you got to extract it all. And then once it's extracted, make sure you're picking the right one. I believe it's this one. So I'll run anyway, it's just an unrecognized program, so it's going to be a little strange. I accept the license. And this popped up. I'm going to hit yes. Alright, so once you get to this screen, there's two different ways you can install it. If you have an email and a password, you can do it that way. I'm going to enter the license key. So I'm going to enter my email. And the activation key I have in my email. So you literally just copy and paste it. It's extremely long. So just once you paste it over, activate plugin. And then you see it's activated. So close. All right, now that I got it extracted and downloaded, I'm going to open up DaVinci Resolve. I got to open over here. Uh, all right, so now once you're here, you're going to go. We're going to add our media to the timeline. And then we'll go to the color. Then we'll go to the color tab. Right here, you're gonna over here to the right, you're gonna type in Dehancer. And you see it here. And you're gonna click on nodes, add it to the node. If this is your first time opening it and you've already purchased it, you can scroll all the way to the bottom. And it'll say license info, you're gonna press that. It's gonna show you that it's activated. Close that, then you're going to do check profiles, and this will just make sure that you have all the updates that go with it because they're constantly giving updates. So you want to make sure that you have everything on there. Um, this may take a few minutes, so just hold tight. I'll speed it up in the video. All right, so everything's at 100%. You can hit OK. So now that we're in here, everything's up to date. We will go in our settings down here, the bottom right. You go to color management, then the color science is DaVinci YRGB, then Rec 709, you can just leave it out that. 
output color space, you can just do same as timeline. And just save. So now that it's all set up, we can look at the options in the enhancer. There's a bunch to get familiar with. So first you'll go up here to source. Uh, they have a couple of different options. I'll do choose camera. And I use the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 with this. So I'll do DJI Osmo Pocket 3. I shot it in D log M and this just makes it so you have more control over how you edit the video. So this is just kind of the beginning stage. Of, it's pretty bright, a little saturated. So this will allow you to come change everything. Then If you scroll down here, you know, you have your film developer options where you can change you know, the contrast of it. We're going to go all the way to the bottom. So these are the different profiles you can choose. You know, you really just got to play around with it. But what we're looking for. So now that you got the DJI chosen, Osmo Pocket 3, D-Log M, you can kind of come and stop messing with the exposure, the temperature, you know, the fringe, the fringe radius on how much you want it to go out, the tick compensation. And then just as this is the film, uh, this are basically, it's different profiles you can choose from. So if you want it Kodak Go 200, select it. You know, this is kind of like presets in a way. Then how much you want to you know, add on to it. Then you have your film developer options. Now all this, it's kind of minute. So since it's daylight out, I'm actually going to go to Kodak. Let's see, we will do Kodak Vision 350D. You know, this just kind of lowers all the whites and the highlights. You know, really just play around with it to see which one looks best for yours. And then we're going to scroll down to print, which I believe is all the way at the bottom. And this has other ones you can kind of play around with. I am going to do 2383. This is just kind of your standard print. It looks pretty good. And then you can kind of scroll back up top and you can kind of just mess with it a little bit more you know keep kind of going back and forth find a good combination that works for you so I think the combination of your film stock and your print kind of gives you this area it's still a little bright though so there's two areas you can adjust the exposure so in input, these are more of your technical adjustments and don't behave the same way of your tools within the print or your color head. So print and color head match more of your experience with actual film. And so these are a little bit more technical. So, you know, we're just kind of, kind of, you know, these adjustments are really small. So, you know, I, I kind of like that, a little lighter. 
kind of adjust the contrast. It's a pretty bright day, so you want it to stay bright, but you don't want everything overblown. So you can adjust the saturation. So now I'm at. So I'm going to play the video a little. So really you just kind of kind of keep going back and forth until you find one that works for you. So you can go and try the different film profiles. You know, each one's a little bit different. You know, just find the one that works best for you. You have your color separation. Contrast boost. Kind of turn that up a little bit. You got to enable all this. Film compression. Right, just make sure you enable it all. And here you can. Now there's a lot to go play around with. And uh, as you use it more, the more used to it you'll get. You know, it definitely makes color grading and DaVinci Resolve so much easier. I mean, I couldn't ma imagine editing without this now. So let's enable this. This will just kind of help us, you know, change like the lens mode that you used. Amplify the effects, uh, lower it. And here's, you know, your color head, kind of your mid tones, your shadow tones, highlight tones. You can kind of turn this down, you know, give you that really kind of retro film look, if you will. It allows you to turn your blues. You know, it's a little saturated on the green, so you can kind of turn that down. Well, if you wanted to go up a little, I think I'm actually just going to reset that. You know, there's a lot to mess with, and you can get carried away, so it's better to do different nodes for each layer. I'm not doing that here just because I'm trying to show you all, and I don't want it to get too confusing. And then you can see your effects if you turn it off, on. You know, it's still, you know, this was a very bright day. Right point down, you can turn it up. You know, there's so many different options. And really, you know, your best bet to loan it is to play around with it. I'm still loaning it myself. And I learn something new every day, especially as the updates come out. You know, this will just kind of change your focal length of the lens. You know, kind of gives you that zoomed in look if you wanted. You know, if you want to change it to make it look like you shot with a 35 millimeter, 16 millimeter. You know, it's all settled, but you know, that's what makes a difference in a good cinematic video. You want to add a vignette to it. You can change the size of it. Maybe your best bet is just to kind of go play around with it. It's like I said, I'm kind of carried away here. I'll be honest. I just wanted to show you all the difference, so you can kind of see the before and the after. Um, so you can really get a good cinematic but retro film look, you know, kind of make it look like you were shooting with a film camera. That's what this is great for. And then we can go back to our edit section. You know, you can kind of see the before and after, play them.
you know, I was kind of going for that retro look. I mean, you know, kind of that retro 90s vibe. So it, this makes it really easy to attain that look. And there's other looks too you can attain, especially with all the upgrades coming out. So now that we're in here, I'll probably go still mess with it a little bit to kind of clean it up, kind of get rid of this dehaze that's going on. And now I'm going to show you all the mobile app. They do have a mobile app. It's, I believe it's relatively new, but it's very cool and very convenient. So let's get started on that. I'll share my screen on the phone. All right, so this is the mobile app. You can do pictures or videos in here. So they have some pre-made ones. Kind of scroll through, look at it. You know, and these are just presets. You don't have to use these. There might be one you like. There might not be. And then you can always kind of edit the presets. So, you know, kind of a good alternative to Lightroom. Expand it. Let's turn the black point down. You know, you want to give it that film grain look. They have, you know, presets for that too. How much you really want to add to it. You know, really just kind of go around, figure out what each thing does. You know, give it that, you know, that retro film damage look. You know, kind of make it look like an old printed picture. The oval scan. Pretty neat. And up here, if you want to just, you know, change, if you do something you don't like, you can just undo it. Resets. So really just play around, you know, it's just another editing thing. It's very similar to Lightroom, I feel like. Let's try another picture. Um, load it in, you know, you can go our presets, you know, you have your last edit, if, so if you want to just copy your previous settings to it. And there's tons of presets to go through. And edit it. And then once you have it, you can just save the gallery. And that's it. You know, the app very simple, very easy to use. So if you're gonna download it. Uh, so if you're gonna download the plugin for DaVinci Resolve, might as well get the app too. Why not? I don't think it'll replace Lightroom Mobile altogether. But if you don't have the Adobe Suite like I do, you know this might be a good alternative. All right. So I'll show y'all one more edit. So once you have it in your timeline. You go over the color, you know, you have your node selected. Easiest way is just to type in Dehance. Comes right here, Dehancer Pro 7.2. Add it to the node. And then this allows you to mess with it all. You can do the Rec 709. So I'm going to choose camera. And this was tucking in with the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 and D-Log. And so here, you know, you can just kind of change everything. You know, your exposure, your tint, you know, kind of bring it up a little bit. Take compensation. You know, remember, less is more, less is more. And then for your film look, you know, and now the default is Kodak Vision 250D, because that's the last one that we used. But, you know, you can go to Kodak Ultramax 400. And then really just kind of play through them. It'll show you, you know, each one's a little bit different. Some of them more so than the others. 
So just find one that you like. Now you can even go down, they have a bunch of other ones. You can really get pretty. I'm going to film developer, you know, enable it. Turn the contrast up. And you slowly learn what each thing does, just, you know, as you mess with it, just like any other editing software. Refresh and enable. Turn that up a little, bring the color density down. White point. You can change it to Luma if you want, it's not a big difference. Then you know print's gonna be your other main one. You know right now the default is linear, but you can change it to Kodak 2383 print film. Well, you know you can kind of see the differences between all of them. You just kind of play with it till you see one you like. Color head. You know you can bring your yellows up, blues up. probably not going to use in this film grain. You know, this is just kind of changing how you shot. And then we'll just going to label this. play around with it so you can see this is the after before after you know kind of gives it a more cinematic retro feel so yeah that's it all right guys so that was the video if you have any questions just leave them in the comments below and let me know what you think about the plugin if you've used it what your experience of it was and uh, if you have any other tips for anybody else that might be watching, I know there's a lot to do in it and I probably didn't even touch half of it. So just leave any suggestions in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.